Hey guys, and welcome to another tutorial for freshly squeezed samples. This is your host, John Gran, and today I'm going to show you how to layer your drums in any DAW. However, for the purposes of this video, we're going to be using Ableton Live just because that's the DAW that I feel most comfortable with. Um, every DAW has different settings that you can use to take advantage of whenever you're layering drums, but the ones in Ableton, the settings that it has, I think are really useful. So we're going to use that as the example. So let's go ahead and start off by just generating a simple kick. So I'm going to create a drum rack and this is going to be my kick drum. And I'm going to use a sample from our friends over at Freshly Squeeze Samples. So let's go ahead and pick up a drum from Dave Parkinson's Progressive Essentials. He has a lot of really nice drums in this pack. Let's just go ahead and start off with the first kick and I'm going to bring the master volume down just a little bit for you so it's not overbearingly loud. Let's go ahead and put this in and draw in the notes for our kick. And now let's go ahead and bring in a snare. Put another drum rack, go back to our sample pack and just pick any random snare. Go ahead and pick this one and draw in our snare pattern. Bring the volume up just a tad, I think, so it's not too low. All right, and then let's bring in a simple hi-hat pattern. And bring in another drum rack. And I'm just gonna load a bunch of them. All right, so right there we have the basis for a very simple drum loop. Uh, we have a simple kick pattern, a simple snare pattern, and a simple hi-hat pattern. But now what we're gonna do next is we're gonna expand on this and add some really interesting tops. And I'm gonna show you a few tips and tricks to get your drums kind of banging a little bit more. I'm actually gonna bring the hi-hats into this top group. And I'm just gonna color this like this. And then this is going to be uh, one of our tops right here. And let's go ahead and bring in a drum loop from Dave's pack. He's got a lot of nice hi-hats, so let's go ahead and hear what some of them sound like. Already digging that one, so let's bring that one in. Bring that one down maybe by minus five. Then let's go ahead and bring a percussion loop. bring in this one here and let's bring that one also down by minus five so right there we have the basis for a very nice set of drums one thing I like to do a lot of times is I like to side chain the tops so what this does is it lets the um, it allows the kick to kind of kick through a little bit more than it would normally. So what we're going to do is we're just simply going to drag a compressor and then we're going to route that from the kick and we're going to side chain these tops right here. Now can you hear how much cleaner the kick sounds after we've done that? This is before. It's just letting the kick really come through and it's allowing your tops just to kind of still be there and have energy, but it's not going to be overbearingly 
covering the kick, which is a problem that happens a lot of times in these types of productions. So the next trick I'm gonna do is we're gonna add in some found sound to the background. And what this is gonna do is it's going to give us a little bit more of a live feel, right? Um, you know, a lot of times productions of this style can sound very mechanic, very unnatural, but we wanna be able to have something that sounds unique. And so one of the ways that I like to do this is to add Foley sounds to my existing uh, drums. So let's go ahead and bring that compressor in. I've just copied and pasted it from here, added it here. Let's find like a nice Foley sound or whatever that we can layer these drums with. So something like this could work. I'm just gonna be dragging and dropping in a bunch of different stuff. So uh, the whole point of this is to experiment and just to kind of play around and see what, it, what ends up happening. I like this as well. Need to loop that properly. There we go. And let's add in. Now, a lot of these sounds are from different sample packs, but I've also recorded a lot of different Foley stuff over the years. And I love using Foley material because it really gives you the opportunity to really showcase your own sounds and just to really kind of hone in on stuff that you've recorded. So if you have anything like a Zoom H5 or an iPhone to record with, uh, you know, I highly recommend going out into nature and just spending a few hours recording a bunch of different stuff. Uh, these are some sounds that I've recorded out in nature, some guitars I've done. So we can use this right here as well. I'm actually going to mute these other ones real quick just to see what this one sounds like. So it sounds like these are some footsteps of mine. But you might think, well, how are we going to use that in this? Well, I'll show you. So let's go ahead and bring in an OTT from Ableton. Then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to warp this. We're going to have it on beats. And then what we're going to do is we're going to open quantize and I'm going to quantize this to 16 and then let's see what that sounds like. I'm going to take out all the lows because I don't really need that noise ambience. I just kind of want the, the high end, the clicks. All right, now that we've done that, there's a really cool trick that I like to use. And it's under whenever you're in the beats mode of warping, you're gonna click on transients and then you're gonna click on this arrow that's pointing right. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring this down quite a bit and you'll see what starts happening. you see what it's done, it's essentially brought in those transients closer to each other. It's made them really small, each little instance of a sound happening. And it gives it like a very cool, unique sort of, um, I'm not even sure how to call it, but it just sounds really cool. Let's hear that with the rest of the drums. I dig that. Let's go ahead and bring in this other Foley one and we're gonna apply the same technique. Click the right under transients. We're gonna quantize it. We're gonna go ahead and consolidate this clip. I'm actually gonna reverse it just to see what it sounds like. Let's 
go ahead and consolidate that clip. One thing you can do too that's really fun is click on transients and then select 1 16th or whatever pattern you want and then check this out. It's just kind of adding this nice 16th pattern. Let's go ahead and hear what it sounded like before with just the regular transient pattern. That sounds pretty neat. Let's go ahead and add an OTT on it to kind of really crank up those transients. And I think I kind of prefer this mode. Let me just make sure it's all quantized. And as you can see here, you can just keep on adding more and more samples until you find a pattern that you're really into. But as you can hear right there, you're already creating something very unique from very simple samples. Let's go ahead and add in another one. This one could be cool. Go ahead and print that and give it even more tight. Let's add some delay to it just to kind of play around. Let's print that, flatten. Let's add some auto panning to these guys here, just to kind of give it more of like a 3D effect. I'm actually gonna loop that here because the volume starts off really low. Add some saturation. Let's go ahead and freeze that again, flatten it. Let's go ahead and EQ this group over here, take out any unnecessary lows. These hats are a little bit too loose for my taste, so I'm gonna cut them down a little bit. There we go. 
go. And another thing that we can do that I want to show you is there's a lot of different plugins that you can use out there, such as Grossbeat. There's one called Shaperbox that you can use. And what these guys will do is they give you different patterns that you can play with. So let's go ahead and start off first with uh, Grossbeat, which is from uh, FL Studio's uh, set of presets or plugins, I should say. And let's just kind of play around with it and see what kind of patterns we can get. Now, I like playing a lot with the momentary patterns like this. There's lots of cool patterns that you can mess around with, like. So that's gross speed. Let's go ahead and check out Shaperbox and see what kind of cool effects we can get with just the stock presets. Now let's go ahead and play with some of the Ableton stock presets. There's one called Beat Repeat, which I'm not actually a huge fan of, but a lot of people use it and it does come in handy sometimes. So let's just go ahead and listen to some of the presets. Pretty basic, not too crazy. Now, if you want a free plugin to use, there's one called A1 Trigger Gate, which I highly recommend you download. It's very fun to use, and I think it comes with a pretty good amount of presets. But let's just go ahead and listen to what that sounds like. Really cool plugin. It's a free one that I highly recommend you download. It's really great for trance, for all sorts of genres, really. And there you have it, folks. That's how to lay your drums in Ableton or in any DAW. I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned a couple of things today. Don't forget to subscribe and uh, leave a like, and I'll see you next time.